What advantage hath the Jew? He replied, much in every way. Much in every way. Now, of all the advantages there are of bring, being raised in a culture, in a, in a family in which you are taught the Torah, the five books of Moses, which are God's basic instructions for life, of all the advantages there are to being raised to when you wake up in the morning, as you walk by the way, as you lie down at night, as you sit at the table to be taught God's Word your whole life, of all the advantages there are, he says, that chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Of all the advantages there are, the primary advantage is that because unto Israel were committed the oracles of God. What are these oracles that are so important that of all the advantages, this is the greatest advantage? In Hebrews it says, At the time that you ought to be teachers, you need that one teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. What are these oracles that are so foundational, so primary, that we ought not even to be opening our mouths as teachers until we at least have these basic oracles down? It was Peter who said, If any man minister, if any man teach, if any man speak, let him speak as of the oracles of God. What are these oracles that if there's anything that we say, anything that we minister, that these are, have to be the foundational things. Are they even being taught today? Do people even understand these things among those who say they're followers of the Messiah? It was Stephen who said, Our fathers received the living oracles to give up to us. What are these living oracles that the fathers of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right down to the twelve tribes, that they received these living oracles to then pass on to their offspring generation after generation. What are these living oracles? The word oracle sounds a little bit mystical, doesn't it? It's not commonly used in the English language. But the word oracles is the word logion. The word logion in the Greek is the word communication. And we see, according to the testimony of the Scriptures, that Moses and the prophets were sent to the twelve tribes of Israel. That's to whom the prophets were sent. The prophets were not sent to the Algonquin, the Aborigine, the Chippewa, the Cherokee, or any other tribe, the English or the French. They were sent to the twelve tribes of Israel. And the written Logion, the written oracles, the Holy Scriptures, which are the writings of those prophets, they were committed to Israel's keeping. And we see that throughout history that Israel has done a far superior job than any other culture in maintaining the purity of the Scriptures. In fact, in the Torah, which is the, are the five books of Moses, there still remains an equidistant letter sequence in the first five books of the Bible, which in Genesis, every 50th letter you go through the book of Genesis and it spells out Torah, Torah, Torah. Torah. In Exodus, it spells out Torah in equidistant letter sequences, every 50th letter. But in Deuteronomy and Numbers, it spells Torah backwards, pointing to the central book, which is the book of Leviticus, in which every seventh letter in the book of Leviticus is yod Hey vav Hey, yod Hey vav Hey. So whether you read it forward or backward, it spells out the name Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. It is God's signature upon His Torah. And the Hebrew Scriptures to this very day still maintain the same equidistant letter sequence. 3,500 years later, not a letter out of place. Now, could you say that about every English translation of the Bible? That not one letter is out of place? Of course not. Some of the translations are absolutely ludicrous. But yet there is one Torah, there is one Hebrew text, and that maintains the purity. And that is what was committed to Israel, and they maintained that better than the Greeks, than the Latin, than the English, than the, than the French, or anyone else, because it was committed to them. And just as Paul went on to say, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. It says, Israel is the Father's beloved, and the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. What he committed to them remains in their hands even to this very day. Blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles 
But that is just blindness in part. Shaul, Paul, was not blind. Now we see that 